The following episode is titled The White Haze, which is named after chapter 569, which is a part of the chapters it's adapted. The first part of the episode adapts from chapter 555 and then jumps over to chapter 559 and 565. The majority of the episode is adapted from chapter 566 to 570, respectfully. Ichigo now heads off to the Soul Society after his training. Jugo and Ishida has a talk about his majesty while taking part in an execution and Rukia faces off with as not. So let's Let's see what was adapted and what was left crumbling in a frozen tundra. Alright, so just so you know for this specific episode, I'll not be counting any missing panels before we start adapting chapter 566. Anyways, the episode starts off with Ichigo talking to the royal guard about heading off to the Soul Society. This is from chapter 555, a full on 11 chapters before the main chapters in which this episode is adapting. It's an anime exclusive where he gets told that his clothes are made out of a special material so that he can break through the barriers to get to the Soul Society. We skip him noticing that there is no transport back and they create some stairs for him with literally no handbars which means that this is just a lawsuit waiting to happen. He leaps off after finding out that the Soul Society is already under attack and on his way he calls Urahara letting him know I'm on my way so leave some bitches for me to kill. This is where the episode would start. When we get back into the swing of things we now get a scene that plays out where the anime stitch together pages from chapter 559 and 565 where Jugo confronts Uriyu and lets him know about Yuha's power and he also demonstrates it by killing two fallen stern raiders. Of course, there are some panels that are missing and there are some that were just not expounded upon, which means that these would probably be animated later. But for now, I'll just ignore them and move right along to the main part of the episode. Chapter 566, titled What is Your Fear, actually begins with Rukia and Renji heading to the Soul Society among other scenes. But these, except for one, was already animated, so I'll just skip. Rukia is now searching for the enemy, or rather, anyone she can find to help. Before she lands, the scene would show Isane. However, we do skip these four panels in the anime. But when she does land, and a creepy hand reaches out to touch her. Ugh. Asnod seems to have found her. He was searching for Byakuya as his Bankai was returned to him. Asnod remarks that if he kills Rukia, then Byakuya would come running, as thus he attacks without a second thought. Rukia dodges the first, but then his attack hits its target on the second round, seeping deep into her body. But she lets him know his abilities won't work on her. This is where the chapter would end. Chapter 567, titled Dance with Snow White, begins with Asnod looking like his spine is screaming for some relief. We skip this panel. Rukia reaffirms that his attack has no effect on her, but then he starts this long spiel after which he launches another attack, saying that his ability affects all living creatures. And I love the imagery here that the anime used while keeping the same dialogue which is in the manga, but she lets him know that because of her Zanpakuto's ability, she's no longer alive. You see, it reduces her temperature below that of a living person, as thus she is dead. I love the explanation of her ability here, I mean it makes no sense but I can suspend disbelief for a moment. We skip this panel, and then in an instant she attacks, slicing his shoulder. When he tries to retaliate, she freezes him completely in an instant. As good as her abilities are though, she can only use it for like 4 seconds else she risks actual death. And then we skip the final 3 panels of this chapter. Chapter 568, titled Here Fear Here, begins with Wukia raising her body temperature slowly. But Asnod isn't dead, he's just really pissed off. In the next scene, he was in the hospital, presumably very sick until Yuha found him and gave him a script. This this is where he activates his ability. It's really cool to see this very small part in the anime where his very flesh is ripped off because the outer part of his skin was frozen solid. This man looks terrifying. Inosuke's voice actor really dug deep for this, sounding amazing. Great work. Oh yeah, in the manga he landed behind her but in the anime he was in front, just so you know. She tries to attack him but for some reason her attack can't reach him only for her to realize that his fear has infected her through her nerves, mainly her eyes. We skip this panel and here we go again with these disgusting scenes. This one mirroring how Byakuya first felt the brunt of Asnod's attack with these flies crawling all over him. Thankfully, Big Brother comes to rescue Rukia and breaks through the fear with his Senbon Zakura. This is where the chapter would end. Oh yeah, in the manga when he broke through he was behind Asnod but in the anime he did it from behind Rukia which I think hits a little bit harder in that it symbolizes that he's always got her back. This would be the midpoint of the episode as well, give or take. Chapter 569, titled White Haze, begins with Byakuya saving Rukia, breaking through Asnod's fear. Asnod is super glad to see Byakuya so he can defeat him again and tries to attack Byakuya but he isn't having any of it. Within this particular scene, the studio blended 3D and 2D camera movements very nice. For the wider shots, Byakuya and Rukia seems to be on twos while the 3D background continues on ones. But for the closer scenes where we pan closer to Byakuya, we can see that it smooths out the animation and switches him to twos as well, making it seem very fluid. He blasts away everything with his Shikai. 
which is a testament to his newly found strength. This pisses off Asna to no end where he literally explodes out his guts in the most disgusting fashion. And if you were listening to this episode through headphones like me, the audio was so dynamic that I thought I was watching the most disgusting creature in all of existence. The sound design is a chef's kiss of perfection. Byakuya watches him but decides that this isn't his fight and lets Rukia know that she's super strong. These words are the very ones she sought ever since the beginning of the series for him to acknowledge her strength. This is something precious to her. He walks off and leaves her to it. We skip this panel. Julen releases her bankai in spectacular awe. This is where the chapter would end. The final chapter, number 57, titled Closer and Closer, begins showing Asnod's past. But we already saw that earlier in the episode, so we can skip over that to Rukia's Bankai. Asnod is dead frozen from Rukia's attack, so he crumbles into nothing. Rukia's Bankai form is now revealed, and man, the anime knew exactly how to frame it perfectly. You see, back in the filler arcs, primarily the Muramasa section, her sword, Sode no Shirayuki, gained sentience and escaped from her. She had to fight the sword to regain dominance. This attire that Rukia has on is oddly reminiscent of that. The anime goes the extra detail of how highlighting the stiff translucence of her suit, showing that it's completely made of ice and she's frozen solid. Even her eye color changes. On closer examination, her shoulder pads, if that's what you want to call them, you can even see her hair swaying in the breeze through it, as if looking through impure glass, or in this case, ice itself. I have a strong feeling that this is 3D as well, because how could you get that much detail in just a drawing? And something about it just tells my eye that this is how ice would look 100% even when you're looking through it. Anyways, Byakuya lets her know that her bankai is very dangerous and she needs to undo it slowly and carefully else she would die. It seems that he grabbed her hand right in time as it was breaking apart. She does this and so they both head off and try to protect the soul society, now as equals. Now we get to the Isane scene, we do skip these panels which are just establishing shots. She is hiding, healing these two captains injured by Superstar. Yachiru pops up with some beddings. We skip this panel. A stern ritter appears out of nowhere, but Yachiru sucks it to him right in the face, only to be struck right back. But before we get to see any more, this would be the end of the chapter and also the end of the episode. Phew, that was fun. I forgot how fun it was to make these. Anyways, a wonderful episode, really love Rukia's Bankai, it was definitely the highlight of all of this. But let's get to the numbers and see what was adapted, and remember, I'll only be counting chapters 566 to 570. Bleach, The Thousand Year Blood War, episode 19 titled White Haze, covered 5 manga chapters. Each chapter would have an average of 15 pages, adding up to 76. Each page would have an average of 64 panels, adding up to 323, with 12 of those being unique or not adapted. This means that only 311 panels were adapted, meaning out of all 5 chapters, 96.31% was covered. I'm back baby and yes I'll be covering the rest of Bleach Core too. And then jump right into Demon Slayer, so stay tuned. I'll be keeping this one short though. Leave a like, comment and subscribe. I've been your host Kyle, peace out and stay safe out there V Nation. Bye.